Hi guys, and welcome back to video four of our After Effects Beginners course. What is masking? Well, today we're gonna take a look at what it is and how to do it in After Effects. So let's jump into it. So let's learn how to do some masking. First question is, what is masking? Well, that's the process of telling After Effects to select a particular portion of that layer that you're working on. In order to create a mask, go to the rectangle tool up here, or use the shortcut key Q. Then your cursor should look like a crosshair. Make sure the video layer you want to mask is highlighted. Now whenever you click and drag on the viewer, you should see After Effects telling that anything inside of the shape is something that you want to keep, and anything outside of the shape is something that you don't want to see. It's like making a cutout of your video. So now we've selected that we want this portion of the clip and that everything else should be transparent. But even after we've selected our mask, we can make some changes to the mask. We can go down here to our dropdown and we can see that now in addition to having the transform and audio options, we also have a new dropdown called masks. Hit the triangle and then hit the next one and we can see that we have some properties that we can use to influence specific aspects of the mask. Mask path, mask feather, mask opacity, and mask expansion. Let's quickly explore each of these. The mask path simply refers to the location of the mask and allows you to animate it, using the keyframe stopwatch like we did in the other example for animating our video off to the right of screen. If we make a new keyframe and then move forwards and change the position of the mask, we can see that it animates in that direction. Next up is mask feather. And this one will be used very often throughout your After Effects career. What this basically does is gradually fades the edges of what we've chosen and what's not so that it's a more of a gradient instead of just a harsh edge. Mask opacity simply refers to the opacity of whatever is inside the mask. And finally, mask expansion allows you to make the mask area smaller or bigger after the fact. But why would you want to change the mask size instead of just drawing a new outline? Well, maybe you've already animated it and done a lot of work with the mask, and then you go to feather it and you realize that it's a little too small of a selection, but you don't want to go back and do all that work again. So this allows you to keep your work, but make a secondary change to help make it perfect. Great, but there's one last thing that we want to make mention of. Masks can select for what's inside them, but they can also select for what's outside of them. If we go to the top of the mask section, we can see that there's a checkbox called invert. If we select it, then we can see that our mask is now inverted so that the inside is transparent and the outside is visible. You can also do something similar by changing its action to subtract instead of add. There is also a variety of other blending options that you'll likely use far less often, but you can still play around with them if you want to see what they do. Lastly, you can turn off the mask by selecting the none option here. This keeps all of the work that you've done with the mask, but just makes it inactive for the moment but you don't just have to use the rectangle shape to mask with. If we go back up here to the rectangle tool and click and hold it, we can see that we have a bunch of different tools that we can use to select from. We have an ellipse tool. We even have a polygon tool where when you stretch it out and hold it, then you can choose the number of sides you want that shape to have by holding it and then either hitting the up or down arrow keys to give it either less or more points. But beside that, we have this pen tool. This tool allows us to create a mask that's completely free drawn and can be any shape you can possibly think of. Click it in order to start using it or hit the shortcut key G. You can really make anything, even a really weird shape. To do this, highlight your layer and then every time that you click on the viewer, you'll make a new point. And then every time you make another click, that point will connect to the previous one. Keep this going until you create a full shape and then connect the last point to the first. You might be wondering, why would you ever want to make such a weird shape instead of a perfect geometric one? Well, one reason is if you want to rotoscope a person and track their movements over time. If you're interested, we already have a video where we went over that entire process of rotoscoping in detail and how to do it most effectively. But as we're playing around, you might have noticed that if you don't have your layer highlighted and then you start to use any of your mask tools, you'll actually be creating an entirely new layer called a shape layer. What this does is create an entire new layer of just a solid color. And your selection chooses the shape of that solid color. So for example, if you just wanted to make a simple red rectangle, you would make sure that nothing is highlighted and then click and drag to make your rectangle. And then in order to change its color, you would go up here and click the color swatch 
and make your color selection manually. But your shape doesn't just have to be a solid color. If you go up here to the fill option and click the word fill, you can see other options for giving your shape a linear or a radial gradient. You can also make a transparent by just clicking this button here. And that might seem kind of useless until you go up here to the top and increase the stroke. Now your shape is just an outline that can be seen through. But now that you have a shape layer and you've stylized it a little, there are so many other things that you can do to give life to it. One of the best ways to go about doing this is by going down to your shape layer and hitting this little button here that says add. This will pop up a whole list of things that you can add to your shape layer to give it additional characteristics or even animation. We're gonna be quickly going over an example with a feature that you may use a lot in the future, trim paths. To select it, just click it. And I'm just gonna quickly re-add the stroke on the outside of our shape layer and make the rest of the fill transparent in preparation for what we're gonna be showing you. If you go here to the trim path dropdown and move either the start or end parameters, you can see that our stroke looks like it's being drawn on or off. And you can keyframe effects like this so that it happens over time. But not only that, you can get creative by, for example, changing the start and end parameters at the same time so that they show only a small portion of the border at once. Then you can keyframe the offset parameter so that your border segment makes a full circuit around your shape. If you plan on working at all with motion graphics in the future, you can probably see how this would be a really cool feature. Feel free to play around with all the different parameters from the add section to get a feeling for what they all do. We are almost done now, but we're just going to quickly reset our shape layer and then drag it over our subject to show you one last feature. Track mats. Track mats are basically a layer that, when used, is invisible on its own, but it controls the opacity of another layer. Let me quickly show you what I mean. So we have our rectangle here over our subject. But when we go down to our track mat section of the layer footage of our woman and choose the alpha mat of our shape layer, we can see that only what's inside of that rectangle is now able to be seen. It's almost acting like a target of what you can see of the clip beneath it. Cool, right? You can also choose the inverted mat if you want to show everything outside of your shape. And the lumen mat works pretty much the same way, just using luminance from the shape layer to control how transparent our clip is. So we can see right now that our footage is semi-transparent. And if we change the color of our shape layer to something more white, our clip is fully present. And if we get closer to black, our clip gets more transparent. Using all of the features we covered in this tutorial will help you to have a more holistic understanding of masking in After Effects. And it'll help you to be more prepared for the next challenge you face trying to create your own After Effects projects. But guys, that's it for this one. I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable masking in After Effects. In our next video, we're gonna go over how to create and work with simple text. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.